Hello, everybody. Elizabeth here with Country Peony, and welcome to episode 39 of Coffee and Crafting. I'm so happy to be back after about a month and a half of taking a summer break to be with my kids. I am so excited to be here with you. So Coffee and Crafting is a weekly craft show here on Facebook where I showcase um, kind of a fun DIY and just some fun topics. But today's topic is going to be a little bit different than my traditional DIY tutorial. And that is because today we're talking all about one of my favorite things, which is floral frogs. So you can see I've got a really fun floral frog con collection here. Um, I love to go thrifting and floral frogs is something that I always look for. And the reason why I wanted to talk all about floral frogs was because um, whenever I talk about them here on social media, a lot of people, um, or there's always a couple of people who don't know what floral frogs are. And I think they're so fun and they're honestly so versatile. And whether or not you're really into floral frogs, um, I'm hopeful that this can at least get you to think outside of your own box and to look at things in a little different light. So I'll show you um, my collection, kind of talk about that, where I find my floral frogs, kind of the price points that I look for, and then I'll show you how I use floral frogs. So I hope today is not only fun, but a little educational, and it will hopefully inspire you to get out there digging for your own floral frogs. So. Um, thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. But I'm so, so happy to be back. It was nice to take a little break with my family, but ultimately, this is so much fun. Okay, so we're going to get started. So floral frogs are essentially, um, the purpose is to house flowers. They're a way to arrange flowers. And um, I love them because they're so cool looking. I love things that are really practical, but also super beautiful. And um, I love that they come in so many different shapes and sizes. And I am on the hunt for now really unique colors, unique shapes. And um, they have some that are just gorgeous. So when I was at Round Top um, last year, I saw a swan one and I love swans, that's my thing. And um, it was gorgeous, but they were asking $150 for it. So I thought, well, I'll pass on that one. But today I kind of wanted to show you some of mine and what I spent on them and where I get my floral frogs from. So you've probably seen the glass ones. These are very popular. Um, I spend anywhere from $8 to $15 on these. And I find most of my floral frogs at estate sales. That's where the best prices are, honestly, or thrift shops. Um, and then antique stores, you'll have your nicer ones, but the price points aren't as good. Um, and then I, I have a lot of these pin cushion ones, which is the really spiky ones. I feel like these are the, the most common, but they have beautiful different colors. They come in the copper and the green and the different shapes, which is so cool. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to put these on display here in the studio. I think that would be really fun. Um, and then you also have your cage floral frogs, which have these really cool cages. And then you have, oh, and this one's really cool because I love the shape of it. And this is the largest floral frog that I have. And I paid, I think, $30 for this, which is the most I've ever spent on a floral frog. So you can get some for a pretty good deals. I actually rounded up some of my favorites um, in the uh, description below if you want to check them out. But I wouldn't spend any more unless you love it. I mean, I'm not going to stop you from buying something that you love. But I think spending anywhere from like $5 to really max something really cool like this, 30 bucks, is probably the max that I've spent. But again, um, you do you and whatever your heart says. So this is another fun one that just kind of sits on top. And then we've got some. These are my only brand new ones. These are from Amazon. And these are great. I'll explain in a little bit what I use these for. And so... The, oh, and this one's really fun too. I don't know what this is called. I need to look that up, but it's like, looks like a mattress, a spring mattress. Super cool. Love the colors on this one. It's so beautiful. Um, and so all of my floral frogs, aside from these, are vintage, um, which means they've been used. And so if you look in these crevices, you can see that they are a little dirty. And honestly, they have little pieces of flowers left over in them. And I personally think that is so cool because it continues to tell the story of a floral frog and kind of where it's been. 
um, but that's totally up to you and what you're what you're after. You can easily clean these. You just kind of I like to put them in soapy dish water, um, and then just let them clean. And you know you can scrub them out. But honestly, the patinas they don't really bother me. And then the only other thing when you're looking for glass ones is that these do break easily, and so sometimes the interiors are kind of broken. So I would check that out. Really look at them good. Um, before you go from there. Okay, so now that I've kind of shown you my floral frogs and where I get them from, I want to tell you how I use them. Okay, so the number one re way that people use them is they're great because they are very eco-friendly. So I used to use a lot of foam in my crafting projects, and honestly, sometimes I still do. But foam is terrible for the environment, and so florists in particular are looking for ways to get away from the foam um, bases and so they're using wires they're using floral frogs as well and so you can use like a floral putty if you want to attach to the bottom of your floral frog and then you can place it into whatever vessel you're going to use I personally don't use a floral putty because I find it really tacky and it's hard to clean but if you want to check it out I've got um, a link in the description below to, if you just want to look at floral putty but the, the, really the thing is, is that I've got them in different sizes and shapes so that I can just set them down below in whatever vessel I have. And you just place it down there. And then it's as simple as, I'm using faux flowers for this experiment, but you're just placing them in there. How easy and how simple and fun is that? Um, I'm no floral designer, but I do love arranging flowers. It's one of my favorite things to do. And floral frogs make that process so easy. And I even use them with my faux flowers, as you can see here. And honestly, if you're doing faux flowers, that's just beautiful on its own, personally. I think that'd be so cute, stacked up with some books on your mantle. And then maybe you could even stack a couple of uh, floral frogs in different shapes and sizes. And there you go, you've got a beautiful little vignette um, ready to go. And you can change it out for your seasons, you can change out your cake stand and your flowers for the season. So uh, that's one reason, one way that I use these floral frogs um, is for their intended purpose with flowers. And then I wanted to show you, because each of these has their own unique way of working. So the glass ones, you just set them right on top which is cool because they're beautiful on their own. And you literally just place the flowers in there. So simple, so cute, so fun. Okay, so I've also got these faux tulips linked below because they're amazing. Now let's get into the more unconventional uses for floral frogs. So we've talked about flower arrangements and I also talked about adding them to vignettes. So you could do a flower on one, Let's use this big, big one. I love this one so much. It's so big. It's massive. It's so fun. Okay, so you could put, you could stack them um, on top of each other. That's really fun to create a cute little vignette like with your flower. Or you can um, take, let's take this one because it's a little bit more narrow or long. And you can do this for every season. Um, and you can even do it for like upcoming events. If you've got an invitation, you want to keep on display. Look how cute that is. You could do a fun like Halloween vignette with a really cute vintage Halloween. Um, Christmas this is a great way to display Christmas cards. You put them on your mantle. You just put a whole bunch of these adorable little um, floral frogs and you just stick them on your mantle like so. This is great for a place setting for Christmas time, unless you have little children and they might prick their finger. But this is just a really fun way to display and use floral frogs with the pin cushion um, technique. And then again, you can just kind of do a fun vignette. You can display fun reminders. You can set this on your mantle, on your table. You have fun with it. But I think this is a really easy way. And I think it's actually better if your floral frogs do not match. I think that adds to its charm. They're fun, they're beautiful. Okay, so displaying cards is one way that I use floral frogs. Another way that I use floral frogs is here in the studio, I have so many beautiful um, and just fun and quirky craft supplies. 
And so I love, I found this at the dollar store. I had to get it with my kids. And so I use it to hold my craft supplies. I think it's really fun. It's a really cool way to showcase your craft supplies or if you've got some pens that you really like. Um, very simple, very fun um, way to do that as well. I think it's cute. I am all for using things that are beautiful and functional, but not for their intended purpose. So it's like a conversation piece. So if someone were to come over, they would say, what is this that's holding that? Oh, it's actually a floral frog. And I found it when I went thrifting and I actually got a really good deal on this and so forth and so forth. Anything that can start a story um, is beautiful. Okay, so holding your craft supplies, so simple. And the beautiful thing is, I love this one for that, but you can also um, use your glass ones for it as well. You just place them in there, so fun, so simple. And you can even stick a flower in there because why not, why not, okay? So fun. Um, so you've got the cage ones and then the glass ones that you can use for that. And then I also wanted to talk about these tiny ones. These are super helpful because if you're a prop stylist um, like myself, so I like to take overhead shots for um, Country Peony and these tiny ones are fabulous because when you're doing an overlay, um, so for instance, I would just lay it flat and then I could lay this card on it and then let's say I could have this beautiful scissor underneath. It creates beautiful dimension if I did an overlay and then I could add this really sweet little flower. And so it's great because it adds some depth to the photo um, without actually seeing it. So here I'm taking a little bit taller one and then you just kind of balance it on there. So I actually use these small ones all the time when I'm doing flat lays because they're tiny. They can hold like a little felted piece whenever I do my fun felted items. Um, they can even hold ribbon and so forth where you can't see them. But it creates a beautiful um, dimension and when you get an overhead shot like this, it's not flat on your surface, okay? So that's how I use the tiny ones. Um, so we have covered using floral frogs as a traditional, um, for traditional floral arrangement, but I also like using them to hold cards for fun vignettes. I love using them for my craft supplies. I love actually just using them for their intended purpose. I think that's really fun. Another great reason to use floral frogs is I love to thrift vessels like this. This is a beautiful milk glass um, vessel, but it's really unique in that it's got such a wide mouth and that's really hard to put flowers in unless you've got a really big hydrangea or something like that. And I could always do the tape across, but this makes it so easy to make an arrangement. You just stick a tiny floral frog in there and um, it makes your arrangement really simple. So these are a little bit tall, but you get the idea um, without having to, because um, some of my vessels, honestly, most of my vessels are, are oddly shaped. And I think that's part of the beauty of it. So this works obviously great with real flowers. You just fill it up with some water and you're good to go. So fun. So I hope I inspired you to think outside the box a little bit when you are thrifting or when you're shopping to see how you can use things. Honestly, you can shop your home too because there's so many beautiful things in your home that, that you can use for another purpose. Um, and I hope this kind of just scratched the surface for you for what you can do with floral frogs. Um, and if you have any questions about floral frogs or ones that you've seen in the wild, I would love to hear about them. I'm trying to add to my collection and it's just so fun. I'm actually going to an estate sale on Friday, so I'm hoping that they have some there as well. So thank you for following along. I will have a brand new episode for you next Monday here on Facebook at noon Central Standard Time. Until next time, I hope you have a beautiful week and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much.